the truth is coming out. The truth about all sorts of government operations over the last few years. Certainly the truth about COVID, which you and I knew from the beginning. You know, I hate to say I told you so. And many of you told me so and each other so, because it was so obvious from the beginning that if you've got a major bio lab down the street from where allegedly this virus came from, and the virus has all these strange features that we haven't seen before, probably did not come from a bad batch of bat soup, might have had something to do with the bio lab. Then when you found out that Fauci and the National Institutes of Health were actually funding this kind of research on bat coronaviruses, funding the Wuhan Institute of Virology, all of a sudden it seemed pretty obvious. But that's just starting to come out now. Another lie that has been dispelled, some truth that's finally coming out now, is that what we were told about January 6th, the worst day in the history of the Republic, what you were told about that was largely not true. The handful of videos you saw from January 6th uh, were, were selected to be the most violent, scary videos you could possibly see. But then when you look at 41,000 hours of security camera footage from that day, you find out that the image presented in those videos that, that the liberal media exclusively had, had put forward did not accurately reflect what happened. The clearest example of this would be that the QAnon shaman, you know, the guy with the horn hat, he, he was not this maniac revolutionary leader running through the Capitol as the police tried to chase him. The police escorted him through. They tried to open locked doors for him. And there were many such cases of that. So how do we know that? We know that because the Republicans won control of the House again, which meant that Kevin McCarthy was able to get control of 41,000 hours of security camera footage. He gave that to Tucker Carlson and Tucker's investigators. Tucker released that footage. Coincidentally, I was on the show the night that he released it. So I'm sitting there in the green room. <laughs> I usually don't pay attention to the shows before I go on them. And I'm spellbound. I'm looking at this footage. I said, oh my goodness gracious, what we were told is not really true. So how is the White House reacting to this? Corinne Jean-Pierre says that you need to stop believing your own lying eyes. When you look at the depositions that have been out there uh, recently, it even states from Fox News leadership that they do not see Tucker Carlson's show as news or even truthful. That is coming from the Fox leadership. That's not coming from me. That is coming from them. And I also would quote, I'll paraphrase here, what the chief of Capitol Police said. He said, when you watch, essentially, when you watch Tucker Carlson as it relates to January 6th, it is misleading and it is misinformation as with the conclusion of what happened on January 6th, the attacks that happened. As you saw from the president's statement, 140 officers were injured. Nearly 140 officers were injured on that day. It was an attack on our democracy. It was an attack on our constitution. And you cannot white, whitewash that. Tucker Carlson cannot whitewash that. Anyone who doesn't see with their own eyes what occurred cannot whitewash that. And so the president is going to stand with the police officers. He's going to stand for truth. And clearly that is not what Tucker Carlson believes in. If, if you've seen it with your own eyes, you, you can't whitewash that, right? The, the issue for you guys is that right now people are seeing this with their own eyes for the first time. They're seeing lots and lots of security camera footage, and they're seeing that the story that you presented is not true. Even down to the police officers. We were told police officers were killed on January 6th. That was just completely made up, and the newspapers that reported that had to correct those stories. A lot of newspapers making a lot of corrections in recent times. But of course, the story runs on the first page. The correction runs on page Z10,000, so many fewer people see that. But that's not my issue here. My issue is not that the White House is criticizing Tucker Carlson. Of course, that's going to happen. It's not that the White House is trying to spin and trying to tell people not to pay any attention to the new evidence that's come out. My issue is that last line. It's Tucker Carlson, he doesn't believe in the truth. Tucker Carlson, he's not on the side of the truth. This coming from the libs who constantly insist that objective truth does not exist. That's my big problem with it. This was the topic, one of the topics of my speech last night at the University of Buffalo. The question of transgenderism, the question of feminism, the question of all these ideologies, 
it seems to me, would be, is it true or is it false? And and yet whenever you bring this up to a liberal, they'll say, oh, who cares? They'll say, who cares? They'll say, what is truth? They'll say, whose truth? Is it your truth? Is it my truth? They'll say, there's no objective truth. That's a construction of the evil white male patriarchy. How dare you use the T word in here? Just, just much lamer versions of the same cynical question going all the way back to Pontius Pilate, who when Christ says, I am the truth, Pontius Pilate says, what is truth? That's what the libs say. And now Corinne Jean-Pierre and the White House has the audacity to say, Tucker Carlson doesn't believe in the truth. Half this country doesn't believe in the truth. And it's not our half. It's not the conservative half. We're the ones who are just trying to, to, to keep hold of any semblance of the truth at all. While the libs say that boys are girls and girls are boys and up is down and black is white. We're just saying, no, hold, come on. They'll say, no. In this modern world, anything can be anything. In the world of postmodernism, in the world of Derrida, in the world of Foucault, in the world that students are taught now, they are educated to believe that there is, there is no such thing as outside of the text. It's a famous line from, from uh, literary criticism in our postmodern crazy era. There's, n- there's nothing outside of the text. There's nothing, there's no, there's no objective reality. It's all just the meaning that we make of it, man. It's all just whatever you think. You think you're a woman? Well, you're a woman. You think you're a cat? I guess you're a cat. Who's to say? Who's to say? But Tucker Carlson doesn't believe in the truth because he's playing videos of what actually happened for his audience. Hello, Pot. Hello, Pot. Would you like to meet Kettle? I mentioned I was at the University of Buffalo last night. Had a great time. Really, really packed house. Uh, Unfortunately, we were not able to get a larger venue. So the speech was in a venue that I think was, we were only permitted to seat 300 people. We had, we were allowed to do a little bit of standing room on the side, but there were a thousand people outside and half of the thousand people were there screaming their heads off and saying that they, I should be killed and shrieking all sorts of bizarre obscenities. And then the other half was there just to come in and see the speech. Most of the people who made it in to see the speech were on the open-minded, inquisitive, calm, normal side of things. There were a handful of protesters who were sitting there, and then almost the moment I opened my mouth, they started shrieking, trans lives matter, trans lives matter. And I said, okay, I think I, think I got the point. Trans lives. And then the police had to try to haul them out of there because they just wouldn't, wouldn't move. And they only knew about six or seven words, so it was not a, a particularly interesting dialogue. Uh, but we survived. I, you can watch the speech right now on the YAF YouTube channel. The thing that most struck me about going to the University of Buffalo, where there was this major, major protest, pretty much every news organization from the Buffalo area had come in. There were multiple, there was a press conference the day before about what I might say that the university president had to answer for this. The SUNY, the State University of New York, the whole system of SUNY schools, board of trustees and chancellor released a statement about how terrible I am, which did not speak very well of SUNY because they apparently didn't understand the basic meaning of my words. But all of this, I'm not, I'm not just saying, you know, it was a big show and you should all show up to the next show, though obviously you should. The reason I mention all of this is because there was so much press, there was so much publicity, there was so much hubbub. And then when it got to the questioners, when it got to the Q&A part at the end, the liberal critics who were in the room didn't know what I believe. That was what was so striking. There could not have been more publicity about the things that I say and think that spurred all of this protest. Going back last week to my speech at CPAC, all the way up to the event last night. People were being inundated in the Buffalo area with information about what I have allegedly said and believed. And yet when the questioners got up there, they had no idea what I thought. A guy gets up there, he says, Michael, you have said that uh, sex and gender is, is purely a physical factor of biological sex. Now, I'm just using that one example because I've talked about it on the show quite a lot. 
How many times have I said, I don't think that human nature is only about biology. I think that man is body and spirit. I think that gender expression is a legitimate way of talking about a real phenomenon, which is the the, uh, metaphysical answer to our physical nature. And how often do I I talk about that all the time? I frequently say I'm a little different than other conservative commentators on this issue because I think that the, when people talk about gender expression, they're really just trying to talk about the soul, which is obviously an important part of human nature. So I talk about this all the time. I'm not saying that these protesters need to listen to every episode of my show or even any episode of my show. But my question is, if you've never listened to a thing that I've actually said, why would you show up screaming, protesting, saying that people have to kill me? Why? Rush Limbaugh used to have this. People used to believe, they earnestly believed that they knew what Rush Limbaugh had believed and had said. None of these people had ever listened to one single episode of the Rush Limbaugh show. So how did they think that they knew what he thought? Because they heard three words on MSNBC, because they saw some press release from Media Matters. Half the time, the, the news clip or the press release didn't even accurately reflect Russia's words, but they formed this image in their mind and it just wasn't true. And, and coincidentally, this was the topic of the speech last night on feminism and how feminism gave us transgenderism. Since everybody's talking about transgenderism now, the, the transgender activists who say that we're killing everybody and we're evil and we're terrible, we need to be shut down and shut up and locked up, They're convinced that we're wrong. We who hold to the view that everybody held of human nature from prehistory until approximately five minutes ago, we are definitely, totally, hatefully wrong. And they, the people who hold a view that was invented within the last eight years as a matter of public life, they are totally 100% correct. And they know that they're correct because some man feels that he is a woman or some woman feels that she is a man. But the question you've got to ask is, is it possible you're wrong? This was my question. to I talked to some protesters after, well, we'll hopefully be able to get some of that video up. I talked to protesters after the speech and they kept telling me things that I believe that I don't actually believe, that I haven't said, that I've regularly contradicted. And I think, If you can be so wrong about that, if you can be so wrong about this relatively minor political event that you've spent the last week wasting all of your time plotting, trying to get shut down, screaming, making posters, showing up, threatening people, if you could be wrong about that, is it possible that you are also wrong when you, a man, say that you are a woman? Is that possible? That's my only question for them. It is Fake Headline Friday. I've got my fake headlines. I will, I've got a lot more, not just voice mailbag, regular written mailbag. we got everything, man. I still have a little bit of coffee. We're good. See you over there at the member block. If you are not a member yet, dailywire.com slash Use code Knowles and get two months free at checkout. See you over there.